mom. I'm Alonia. Hi, I'm Ashley. And we're both sisters and creators from the Philippines. Cool, that's cool. First of all, for both of you, I've asked this question previously to other members of the cast many years ago. How does Rocket Raccoon smell like? <laughs> oh my god. Um, he smells like... A newborn puppy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're asking how Sean Gunn smells like on set? <laughs> because Sean Gunn is the actor who's actually playing Rocket. He smells good. He, you know, he cleans up pretty well. <laughs> this question is for Karen. So how has your portrayal of Nebula evolved from the first Guardians of the Galaxy film to this one? This character has evolved so much. Uh, in the first movie, we met her and she's this sort of villain and she's bitter and twisted and so angry at everyone in the whole world um, and then throughout each movie she's sort of slowly been learning how to accept love and show love towards other people um, so she's gradually softening becoming more vulnerable and learning to love her guardians family and feel accepted for Pom if you could give Mantis advice from your own perspective what would it be? I would say uh, stand up for yourself but it's actually what she's doing in Gardens of Galaxy 3 so you know how about you Karen? If you could give advice to your character from your own perspective, what oh, would you be? The advice would be to really work on believing that she is worth loving. I think Nebula has a hard time believing that she's worth receiving love from people. She doesn't love herself, so I would sort of ask her to figure out how to love herself. This is for Karen. So Nebula is a complex character with a difficult past. So how did you prepare to delve into her emotional journey throughout the series? Oh, I did a lot of work. Uh, before I started filming the role, I worked with a movement coach to kind of develop what kind of style of movement and then a voice coach and an accent coach. And then when I got on set for the first time, all of that went out the window and I didn't use any of the work that I did. <laughs> because so I know, because James Gunn was like, now let's figure out something else here. Uh, why don't you do it like Marilyn Monroe or Clint Eastwood? So I ended up sort of doing an impression of Marilyn Monroe slash Clint Eastwood. And that kind of changed the way I moved, the way I spoke, the way I even thought about the character. Um, and then from that point onwards, I ended up just reading a lot of psychology essays on what it's like to be the scapegoated sibling. Uh, when your sibling is the golden child, the, the best one, the one that does everything the best and what it's like to be the one that's never good enough. So I've just been reading um, what that feels like, which I don't know personally because I'm an only child. So that was interesting. Thank you. Oh, Thank I you. love that. Because oh, <laughs> we're siblings. Yeah, so... So I really relate oh, to you're that. you're siblings, of course. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one's for Pom. Can you share any memorable or funny moments from working with your fellow cast members, particularly with Dave, aka Drax, since your characters have a unique connection? Oh my god, there's like so many beautiful moments, you know? Do, do some amazing fighting. Yeah. <laughs> she does a cool move that is like, wow. Yeah. Where you jump up on someone. Yes, it's true. There's a comedy in it too. Yeah. And it's like this fight starts and I'm with Drax and then I do that. Yeah. Uh, there's like, oh yeah, at some point I use my power to make someone do something towards Drax and it's, it's a very funny moment. But I can't say what it is. You'll see when you watch the movie. Look at that cool chair you got. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the gaming chair. Wow. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hello, James. I'm Alicia. Hi, I'm Ashley. And we're sisters, both creators from the Philippines. And first of all, congratulations on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The trailer was amazing. Oh, thank you. I can't wait for you guys to see the whole movie because I really think the trailer is just a small taste of what this whole movie is. And it just, it just runs through such a gamut of emotions in so many ways. I, I cannot tell you how I'm excited for the rest of the world to see this movie. Yes, we were extremely excited. Like, the few minutes we saw of it was, like, not enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I was about to cry and then it ended and I was like, okay, it's messing up with my emotions right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that there's been a few tears, I gotta say. I've gone through a few test screenings and I've heard quite a few tears, you know. And there's always a few tears in Guardians movies. There's always some emotion, but this one, we really wanted to push it. And I think that when you see the beginning of the movie and you see how it starts with Creep and the Radiohead song, we see, oh, wow, this movie's a lot different than the first two movies. I think it has everything that we love about the Guardians movies, the fun, the humor, the action, the outer space scenarios. 
but it has even more heart, more drama. It's more about these characters and who they really are at the end of the day. Definitely. So our first question would be, what inspired your vision for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and how do you feel it sets itself apart from the previous films in the series? Well, I think that, you know, uh, you know, when I first started working on these movies, I was seeing how cinema was changing. There were not as many movies coming out in theaters, and the movies that were coming out in theaters were big spectacle films. And sometimes they were good movies, but more often than not, they were soulless. They didn't have, uh, they were more about the explosions than they were about the characters getting exploded or almost getting exploded. And what I really wanted to do was to come into, uh, you know, characters like these, and create a spectacle film that was first and foremost about character, about story, about the heart at the center of all of this. It still has all the explosions and crazy stuff that you know we want to see in these big movies, but it's really about the characters. And so that was my goal from the very beginning. I think that that is you know sort of progressed throughout the series. And the main thing for this movie was it was just so important. And I was terrified. I'll, I'll be honest to really you know stick the landing to create a final chapter for these characters that was worthy of how much i you know love rocket how much i love star lord and groot and zoe and you know uh, the whole gang so um i think we've done that I, I feel really good about it people seem to just you know absolutely be going crazy over the film excited to go see it so i feel really good about what we've done and uh, relieved frankly yeah, Thank that's you. amazing. Yeah, Thank so you mentioned uh, the focus on character for this particular film. So, uh, which character in the Guardians of the Galaxy universe do you personally identify with the most and why? The rocket is me. In some ways, sometimes I feel like this is my autobiography, as ridiculous as it sounds. I love Rocket and, um, you know, he's this little guy who was just an innocent animal who was turned into something he wasn't supposed to be. And he feels isolated and I felt isolated. Like I'm sure a lot of us have felt isolated throughout the years, um, felt like we didn't belong or were you know, different from other people in this way or that way. And I grew up feeling like that. And Rocket is like an extreme version of that because there's nobody else in the world like him. He says it in the very first movie. Um, and, uh, and so that isolation, his inability to reach out and connect with other characters that we've seen changing very slowly from the first movie to the second movie and in this movie really being about how he opens himself up to the world and is you know put into that position where he's able to do that for the first time that has been the center of this movie for me amazing all right there's gonna be a kind of unique question so at the dawn of artificial intelligence advancements was ai part of the production and what are your thoughts on this um ai was not a part of the production um i honestly don't know that much about ai i've never used uh, chat gpt or anything like that but i am i'm actually you know you know i'm you know wary of ai like a lot of people are but I'm also very excited about what it means for medicine, what it means for law enforcement, what it means for a lot of areas of life that AI can actually help us. So I'm a, you know, I'm an old fashioned science fiction guy. I believe that we can create a better world through technology. I believe that that's possible. Um, it's really just about us focusing on what's most important to us like the Guardians movies do. You know, we can have a big spectacle film that it's most at its core is about loving one another and about the connections between human beings. And I want people to walk into this movie and walk out and feeling better about the person they sat next to than when they walked in. And I think in the same way that AI can be used for benevolent purposes and, you know, hopefully it won't be taking us all over in a few years. We'll see. All right, beautiful. Again, thank you very much. And once again, congratulations on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Thank, thank you, you guys. So much. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's go. This May. Drax, sit up. What is here for? Drax, it's on a bed. Summer begins. Why is it up long then? With their final tour. I'm tired. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. That's why it's made like this. So you lay down on it. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Only in cinemas.